everyone, I am Sharifa Deradani and I am Rachel B. Sadoso from Zamuanga Dulcer National High School, Grade 9, Section Diamond. And we are given a task to make a tutorial video about solving methods of proofs and disproofs that was discussed to us by our advisor and intelligent math professor, Mr. Almar L. Angkong. I will discuss later about proof by contradiction and I will discuss about proof by cases and both of us will tackle about this proof by counter example. So sit back, relax, and listen carefully. <laughs> First, we'll talk all about a new method of proof that is very common in logical thinking. Up to this point, we have been proving a statement true with direct proof. The conclusions are followed from a series of definitions and proven theorems. But sometimes, direct proof are difficult, and we can instead prove a statement indirectly. This is called proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction is a way it is a way to establish the truth of a statement if P then Q by proving that if Q is not true, then P is also not true. It is based on the law of non-contradiction. Law of non-contradiction states that a mathematical statement cannot be both true or false. It is also called indirect proof, a pedagogical argument, proof by assuming the opposite, and reduction impossible. It is a way it is a proof when we temporarily assume the conclusion is not true. Then we reach a contradiction for assumption, therefore proving the conclusion is true. It is a more of a general form of human called reductio ad absurdum. So, to deepen your understanding in solving a statement indirectly, I will give you an example. So, example number one. Proof that for all integers n and n, such that m squared is not equal to 4 and plus 2. In writing the proof, we can easily um, represent it as the original statement. So, suppose there are integers m and n, such that m squared is equal to 4 and plus 2. To make our m square be even, we can factor out 4n plus 2 into 2 times 2n plus 1. m square is even, so m is even as well. So m is even, so if m is even, there exists an integer k such that m, m is equal to 2k. m is equal to 2k, so m square is equal to 2k square. Then m square is equal to 4k square. If m square is equal to 4k square, we can easily substitute 4k square into m square. So 4k square is equal to 2 times 2n plus 1. We can divide it by 2. Then 2k square is equal to 2n plus 1. As you can see, 2k square is even and 2n plus 1 is odd. So this cannot be equal. Our contradiction is... There must not be any integers m and n such that m square is equal to 4 and plus 2. So, our um, previous assumption is possibly be wrong, and this first statement is true. So, let me give you another example. Example number 2. Prove that square plus 2 is irrational. When we write the proof, we can easily write the opposite of the original statement. So suppose square root of 2 is rational. And when we say about rational number, it's a fraction of an integer divided by other integer. 
we can write as we can write it as a over b. The square root of two is equal to a over b. We can assume that a over b is reduced into lowest terms, so that the numbers a and b don't have the don't have common factors. To so to get rid of this radical sign, we can square it. So so square root of two by the power of two is equal to two, and a over b square is equal to a square over b square. Cross multiplication, then 2b squared is equal to a squared. 2 is a divisor of a, so a is even. So there exists an integer k such that a is equal to 2k. So if a is equal to 2k, then a squared is equal to 2k squared. Then by this given equation, 2b squared is equal to 2k squared. And 2k squared with the power of 2 is equal to 2b squared is equal to 4k squared. And we divide it by 2, then b squared is equal to is, is equal to 2k squared. So b is even because 2 is a divisor of b. So if 2 is a divisor of b and a, so my first assumption that this fraction a over b uh, reduced into lowest terms is wrong. Since my assumption is wrong. Um, the whole proof falls apart. So, my contradiction is square root of 2 is irrational. So now, we're gonna discuss about proof by cases. Proof by cases simply means breaking the assumption in two cases. So let's start our introduction. Sometimes, the hypothesis of the statement can be broken down into simpler cases so that it can be investigated separately. The validity of a proof by case rests on the equivalence that case 1 or case 2 all the way to case n implies your Q over there which is also breaking down into case 1, which implies Q, case 2, which implies your Q, all the way to case N, which implies your Q. So later on, I'm gonna give an example, and we'll proceed to the conclusion, which is the proving decision whether you're gonna prove or disprove. So now, let us proceed to our example. If any integer n, the integer 3n square plus n plus 14 is even. But how will you gonna prove that in any integer, the equation is still even? So let me give you a strategy. First strategy is that assume n is even. Prove 3n square plus n plus 14 is even. Then the next case, you should assume that n is odd. Then prove 3n square plus n plus 14 is still even. So now let's proceed to case 1. Case 1, n is even. Assume that n is even, then there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 2k. Substituting 2k into the equation 3n square plus n plus 14 gives 3 multiplied to the quantity of 2k squared plus 2k plus 14. 2k squared equivalent to is equivalent to 4k squared. So 3 multiplied by 4k squared equals to 12k squared plus 2k plus 14. Factor up 2 to make the equation even. So you got 6k squared plus k plus 7. Since k is an integer, so is 6k squared plus k plus 7 by the closure properties of the set of integers. Hence, 3n squared plus n plus 14 is even in the case where the n is even. So now, let us proceed to the next step, which is case 2. Case 2. When n is odd, 
assume that n is odd. Then, there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. Substituting 2k plus 1 into the equation 3n squared plus n plus 14 gives 3, the quantity of 2k plus 1 squared plus 2k plus 1 plus 14. 2k plus 1 squared is equivalent to 4k squared plus 1. 3 multiplied by the 4k squared plus 1 gives 12k squared plus 3 plus 2k plus 1 plus 14. Combine similar terms, 12k squared, 2k, 3 plus 1 plus 14 is equal to 18. Factor out 2 to make the equation even, so that gives you 6k squared, plus k plus 9. Since k is an integer <laughs> Since k is an integer, so is 6k squared plus k plus 9 by the closure properties of the set of integers. Hence, 3n squared plus n plus 14 is even in the case where n is equal to 2k plus 1 or when n is odd. Then we've been proving a statement true by proof by contradiction and proof by cases. So now here we are with proof by counterexample. By proving a statement false. So this proof by counterexample proves that a statement is false by proving an example where the statement is not true. And the use of this proof by counterexample is to be able to give an example that proves that the original statement isn't always right. Consider this statement in this form. For all values of x such that of n, which is also a set of integers, if p of x is true, then q of x is false. Suppose that we wish to prove that this statement is false. In order to disprove this statement, we have to find out the value of x in our n, for which p of x is true and q of x is false such that x is called a counterexample. Here's our first example. Prove or disprove. All prime numbers are odd. So here's our solution. This statement is false. And our counterexample is that if n is equal to 2, so our n is even. But the factors of 2 are only 2 and 1. 2 and 1 are the only factors of 2, so it is prime. We have found an even prime number, so the original statement is not true. Example number 2. Prove or disprove the following statement. 3 to the power of n plus 2 is prime for all integers and is greater than that or equal than zero. So if n is greater than equal to zero, if n equals to zero, then the answer is three. But this is a prime. n is equal to one. Still a prime. And I got it It is still a prime. And it goes to three. Twenty nine is a prime. And it goes to four. Eighty-three is still a prime. N is equal to five. Let's try this. As you can see, two hundred forty-five is not a prime because it has a factors of two hundred forty-five and one, five, and forty-nine, seven, and thirty-five. So. 
This statement that 3 to the power of n plus 2 is prime for all integers n is greater to or equal to 0 is false. Hello guys, thank you for watching and we hope you learned something from us. Again, I am Wench Rachel B. Sadoso, Sharifa Dani. now signing out. What you gonna do with that dessert? Do what, do what, do that.